Welcome into the Cowboys report. OTAs are underway for Dallas. They get back on the practice field tomorrow. If you want even more OTA coverage, including maybe some early winners and losers, show us you do. Like today's video right now. I'd love to beat last year's big OTA-like winner, which was well over 1,000. So like the video for me right now. Welcome into the Cowboys Report. I am Tom Downey. We've got some OTA takeaways for you guys. Things underway with a much lighter than normal uh, setup. In particular, no real contact because Mike McCarthy was tired of getting fined and losing OTA practices for too much contact there. But there is some big change coming for this team, led by Mike McCarthy on the offensive side of the football. Things are going to be a little bit different. Dak Prescott spoke about the changes coming on the offensive side of football. Here's what he had to say. As far as the installation, obviously there are some ads, some things taken out. I think you just get the overall feel that maybe the game is going to be called a little bit different. I can't give away too much. But there are some changes. It's not like we're going to throw away our playbook and try to start over or anything like that. This does make some sense. I don't really want a brand new offense for the Cowboys because it's not often that a team that's averaged about 30 points per game with the previous offense coordinator and quarterback both being healthy, at least the quarterback being healthy, ends up causing change. But you did need to make some adjustments. You needed more consistency. My suspicion is you will see the... Uh, the option routes. The Cowboys have liked to run. I think Dak has liked them to a certain extent. Kellen loved them. Mike McCarthy's not a fan. I think those are going to be out of the playbook this year. Dak also had this to say. Guys being to their spot faster, cleaner, which allows them when the play's not there to go into scrambling and create a play. That allows that when the first read and second read aren't there for everybody to be on the same page for that scramble drill. Now, getting your spot faster, cleaner, that is, again, an indication to me of talking about the option routes. It also means you're trying to cut down on the fairly heavy amounts of reads Dak has done in the Kellen Moore offense. He would routinely get to the third, four, three, and at a higher rate than what you normally see at the quarterback position. So the days in theory of Dak getting to read four, read five as part of the normal drop back, I think those are going to be going away. And given that, yes, he can still move, not maybe the same way he did when he was super, super young, but I think you'll see quite a bit of that for Prescott in terms of the scramble drill being the backup there. And that makes sense for McCarthy, right? I mean, I think you're going to see first read is slant, second read is flat. And that's what he loves. He loves the slant-flat combination uh, in that West Coast offense. So those comments trying to mix and match with what we know about in the past for the offense and McCarthy and Prescott, it's kind of the vibe I get they're going there. And also, in theory, fingers crossed, We'll hope with the turnovers as well. That, of course, remains to be seen if the normally low interception rate stays or if it continues to be the high interception rate the Cowboys have dealt with at least last year for Dak Prescott. And in theory, faster, cleaner receivers means the balls don't bounce off their chest and have all kinds of chaos issues on that front. So what is your confidence level in this Cowboys offense? Scale it for me from 1 to 10. One on the low end, 10 on the high end. If the ad break happens to come here on the YouTube side of things, take advantage. Head down there. Let us know how you're feeling about this Cowboys offense. Moving forward at the pinned comment of today's show. Let's move now to Terrence Steele, a big key storyline there for the Cowboys, right? Uh, we are bordering on best shape of life season, although I, ha I have heard for quite a while now that Steele's rehab is going about as well as could be expected. Here's what Terrence had to say. The strength is there. My quad muscle is there. Pass sets feel good. Run sets feel good. The doc said he hasn't seen someone my size recover as fast as I have been recovering. Again, that is bordering on best shape of life season for Terrence Steele. I do think there is a very real chance he is ready in time for week one. He has not been doing anything at OTs, like, say, Tony Pollard, who we'll get into in a little bit. But with some uncertainty around Terrence Steele, the fact that he was your best right tackle last Last year, figuring out what exactly this offensive line looks like for the Cowboys in week one, in week seven, in week 17 is at least a little bit murky and dicey. So we're going to go more in depth on that. But first, if you have not already subscribed to us here at the Cowboys Report, let's get that changed. Hit that sub button right now for free Cowboys videos each and every single day right here at YouTube.com slash at Cowboys TV. 
Let's move to the offensive line here. As this is what I believe is the best five offensive line for the Dallas Cowboys. In order, Tyron Smith, Tyler Smith, Tyler Biotish, Zach Martin, Terrence Steele. That's getting your best five at the five spots that maximize them in the best fashion. And there's been buzz, whispers of could Terrence Steele play some left guard because at least currently, this is what the Cowboys offensive line looks like. Now, uh, I'll make note that Zach Martin wasn't getting uh, or wasn't doing OTA stuff early on. I think he's just getting some time to recover health-wise. So she's old. Old guys don't need to be at OTAs practicing. Uh, but he's going to be a right guard. Josh Balgar is a right guard, but he sucks. Tyron Smith gets the right tackle reps. Matt Willetz goes behind him. And then Matt Farniak was leading a group who we'll get into more in depth here at the left guard spot. But I do want to focus in on right tackle. Because I think the Cowboys, in an ideal world, would like Tyron Smith to be the right tackle from week one all the way through. Two big issues here. Number one is that I thought Terrence Steele outplayed Tyron Smith on the right side of the line. Now, in theory, an entire offseason of adjusting to the right side will make life easier for Tyron. But there's also this beyond the fact that Terrence Steele is just better than Tyron Smith, for, in my opinion. There's no way Tyron Smith plays every game. He's going to get hurt at some point. So maybe that's what you're planning. You're going to put the, the Steele-Smith duo on the right side and then figure out left guard, which is going to be a little bit murky from that perspective because, well, there's a lot of uncertainty there. But as it relates to the right side of the offensive line, that right tackle spot, who do you want at right tackle? You can type in 78 for Terrence Steele or 77 for Tyron Smith. Head down to that comment section and vote who you want to start if both are healthy at, on the right side of the O-line. Now, if the Cowboys are going to go with Tyler Smith is the left tackle, they want him there because they want him to grow and, and be better, etc., etc., the options at left guard. Matt Farniak is a name to, to monitor here. I think the Cowboys like him. We have not seen very much of him. He got the first nod as the incumbent, I suppose, at OTAs. He can also be your backup center in a pinch. Maybe Chuma Adoga is the guy that ends up winning that job. Now, his numbers don't look very good on screen here. Nine sacks, eight hits, a bunch of hurries, middling PFF run grade. He got a little bit of playing time at guard last year for the Falcons, and I thought played well in that game. That was about it, though. Uh, so there is a lot of uncertainty, upside, unprovenness with Chuma Adoga, and uh, Adoga, excuse me, and then Awesome Richards did get some work at guard as well. He got some tackle reps too, got some left guard uh, run. I did not like his guard performance at the Senior Bowl, but that's a that's a tough time to make the adjustment there, and that's why he ended up falling in the end to the to the uh, to the fifth round, which is not the end of the world from that perspective. But it does make things tricky at that left guard spot if it's. A do what happens if Adoga, Farniak, and, uh, and Richards don't impress? I, I think the Cowboys' goal is to keep Tyler Smith at left tackle. They want to keep him locked in there. But if you have a healthy Tyron Smith, well, then him at left tackle, Tyler at left guard makes the most sense, but you're, you're juggling how do you maximize all five members of your best five offensive line with the inevitability that Tyron Smith is going to get hurt. So maybe Dallas's plan is we're just going to plug Tyler Smith in at left tackle and have something resembling stability on that side because we know Tyron's going to get hurt. So they could try Terrence Steele there. I don't think his game fits very well on the left side. So the O-line is certainly worth watching as we wait and see what else happens through OTAs, minicamp, and training camp in the preseason in the weeks and months to come. Let's go to defense now. Kelvin Joseph getting a bit of a position change here. He's getting work at nickel corner. And I don't know if that actually makes it more likely or less likely he makes the roster. But here's what boss man fatted to say about his new position. It's a big chance for me and an advantage because of my capabilities and what I'm able to do. I'm going to show the coach that I'm available and he can rely on me to play the position whenever he needs me to. I'm going to take the position that I'm in and make the best of it. So an, a, an adjustment, I should say, to the uh, offense or the cornerback depth chart here. Trayvon Diggs, Stephon Gilmore, etc. The, the one and twos. Gilmore shown some nice ability so far at OTAs. I think Deron Bland's still your nickel. We'll talk about him on the uh, probably the winners and losers side. Jordan Lewis is there too. Now Jordan Lewis can only play nickel. Deron Bland, I think, can do some inside-outside stuff for you. Mukwamu can do some inside-outside stuff. Now Sean Wright's an outside guy. 
I don't know if Kelvin Joseph getting plugged in at nickel helps his chances of making the roster or hurts it. Because the Cowboys had lost all confidence in Kelvin Joseph last year. And frankly, I think Joseph lost some confidence in himself as well. Because this was a second round pick. Despite a glaring need at corner, he could not get on the football field. The Cowboys did not trust him. That's a real red flag. Now, Joseph also talked about learning from his mistakes, getting uh, to be more mature, not getting mad about being benched. He also had this to say. This offseason was a whole different focus, to come back better, faster, and stronger than what I was last year. Just locking in, dialed in all the way, blocking out the off-the-field distractions of the naysayers, just to prove everybody wrong and show them, I'm Kelvin Joseph, and I'm a Dallas Cowboy. I actually do like that quote from, from Kelvin. Uh, I, I want the confidence in him. I, I want to, I want to, those are the right things that, that you're locked in. Now, he has to prove that what the, that the words he says are backed up by the actions on the football field because it is now or never for Kelvin Joseph. Either he impresses, he flashes, he makes the team and, and starts up to some of the, the immense draft capital given up to him, or his chance it gets cut, and he goes down as another run of recent bad second-round picks, perhaps maybe one of the worst of all for this Cowboys team. So what do you think happens for Week 1, the 2023 roster? Does Kelvin Joseph make this team? Why for yes and for no? You can go ahead and sound off for me in the comments section. Move to Michael Gallup now. The latest on him is, hey, Dak Prescott saying the right things about where Gallup is at in his recovery. Dak said he's starting to come back into what or to who Michael Gallup is and feel himself. Phrasing. That's the guy that I've got a lot of trust in. He's getting his feet under him, and he's going to be better. The Cowboys, not to freak out everybody, but you all know it, they need Michael Gallup to be better. If, if they get 2022, 2021 Gallup from a production standpoint again, that's a problem. And then the, why didn't you go get DeAndre Hopkins, who I don't think the Cowboys want very much, is, is a real red flag instantly. So hopefully Michael Gallup is much better. You get closer to even 2020 version or ideally 2019 version of Michael Gallup. Rapid fire on two other notable takeaways here. Tony Pollard took some walkthrough reps at OTAs. He is on schedule to be ready for training camp. I never really had any doubts about that one. Uh, but good progress for Pollard, who will be the lead back this year for Dallas. And Tristan Vizcaino, the lone kicker right now uh, in uh, OTAs for Dallas, was 5 of 7 in the open period the, the other day. For the Cowboys, John Fossil was the holder because Brian Anger is not there, and he's a punter, so who cares? I doubt they're doing that much punting stuff. Anyway, uh, he missed from 37 and from 51. So that's the kicker update, but we know there's competition coming in the near future at that spot for Dallas.